Now welcome to another lightning response video where I'm going to get to just a couple questions this time even though I have been getting a ton of them, a ton of fantastic questions lately, which I do appreciate, but there is of course only so much time to answer them. And so for now let's get to this one from Alexander Parchomenko who asked, Hey Thor, don't you think it's kind of crazy how the tables have been turned on old fans? We were told gatekeeping is bad and not that I've done this personally at any point. But we were told that Star Wars doesn't belong to any one group, etc. And now that it has become this wreck and we complain, we are told to shut up and go watch something else if we don't enjoy it. Pushed out, we are. The argument, don't watch it if you don't like it, is a shortcut to all forms of criticism and a form of gatekeeping in itself. Shame. And very well said, and I agree that oftentimes saying something like don't watch it if you don't like it is indeed just a way to try and deflect or avoid having to address valid criticisms. It is or could be seen as a form of gatekeeping even. They are trying to silence or keep out those who have uh, the audacity to criticize it. They're not respecting or accepting the opinions of other fans and are demanding that they see it a certain way or else they can leave. And I mean, I have literally been told many, many, many times in the comments of my videos that even though now it is apparently being made for everyone, I hear that all the time these days, Star Wars is for everyone now, but I'm told that it isn't being made for me anymore. I guess when they say everyone, they mean everyone but me or those like me. And that it is time for me to simply accept that and to let go and to move on. It is, I guess, time to kick me out of the Star Wars fandom after four decades of loving it because I don't love everything about it today or what comes out these days. I guess that is the qualification they have set that I must love everything and that I'm not allowed to complain. And speaking of loving it, I do think for some they are just kind of incapable of ever being critical of Star Wars because they just want to love it and that is that. Or they see being positive all the time as a good fan or being a good fan. They conflate positivity with goodness or even having a sort of moral high ground over the haters and more on all that in a second. And so for them, when new content comes out, I think the thought process might just be as simple as, I love Star Wars, this new thing is Star Wars, therefore I love this new thing. And if you don't love this new thing, then you don't love Star Wars. And if anything about it doesn't make sense, I will make it make sense in my head and tell anyone who disagrees that they are wrong because there could be a good explanation for it. We just need to, you know, do a little bit of mental gymnastics to make it work. But again, since it is Star Wars, it is good and only haters question it. And don't get me wrong, I understand wanting to love everything Star Wars. I really don't blame anyone who just wants to love everything about it and enjoy it for what it is. More power to you, I guess. And I mean, I want to love everything about Star Wars too, or at the very least, for most of it to be really good. That is all I really want. And in order to get that, I think we, as paying customers, we have to hold Disney and Lucasfilm to standards. We have to hold them accountable, so that we hopefully always get the best Star Wars possible out of them. I'm not going to love something just because it's Star Wars. I'm sorry, I'm not going to do that, and I consider myself a pretty big Star Wars fan. And as a fan, I feel like I have an obligation to also be critical of it. So that again, we do get the best possible Star Wars for our money. And so Disney and Lucasfilm don't try to take advantage of our loyalty and give us low effort Star Wars because they know we'll eat it up no matter what it is. But anyway, going along with this is another issue. Another reason some always have to be positive and have this view that it makes you a better fan, I think. That being that they also think it makes you a better person to always praise Star Wars. And that has come about in large part thanks to calling virtually any harsh criticism of something, or Star Wars in this particular case, calling it hate, and then saying this hate is toxic and it is destroying the fandom or something, and furthermore that this toxic hate is because of bigotry, that people hate on Star Wars not because they have legitimate problems with it, and how would you know because they just deflect them, but rather because they are an ist of some kind, or of many kinds. And so, by loving everything Star Wars, by always defending it, it makes you a good person. You giving it your full support, you standing up and saying, or posting it on X or wherever, that you love the Acolyte, for example, that you think it is some of the best Star Wars ever, 
is also your way of saying, well, I support diversity, that I am not a racist. And thus, I think some even feel like they have this sort of moral obligation or duty to stand up against those who are being hateful towards Star Wars to gatekeep them. Because again, they must be bad people if they are questioning Star Wars because Star Wars is good and shows a shining example of diversity. And even though, yes, some do go unnecessarily far with their criticism or do say some truly hateful things, I'm not defending the small minority that really go too far. But if the people trying to gatekeep the haters actually got their way, if everyone unhappy with Star Wars does just kind of leave and doesn't care about it anymore and doesn't make videos, doesn't talk about it, doesn't criticize it anymore, well, you will only have left the people who will accept anything and everything. And then Disney and Lucasfilm with far less fans or far less customers or less money coming in, well, they really are going to give you anything and everything that they can. They will give you whatever because you're just going to love it anyway. Alright, and sorry if that was a little harsh, but I do think some fans out there really need to hear that. That it is okay to be critical of Star Wars. It doesn't automatically make you a hater and a terrible person. A lot of really good people have a lot of really big problems with Star Wars, and it is okay to say so. But anyway, let's move on to this question. We're going to do one more here. And this one comes to us from Cheesehead Caleb, who asked... Hey Thor, what would you say to people that say the Acolyte doesn't break canon because the villains in the show aren't technically called Sith? And well, to be a bit blunt once again, but I would say to them, you're kind of missing the whole point. It's not just the fact that the Jedi haven't seen the Sith in a thousand years. It's that they haven't seen a dark side threat like them, or anywhere near their level, in all that time either. I tried to explain this in yesterday's video, but I'm not sure I did the best job. And so I'll kind of go over this again quickly, maybe hopefully more clear. But that line from Kiati Mundi in The Phantom Menace where he says, The Sith have been extinct for a millennium. It has a purpose for the story itself. It is meant to establish the fact that the Jedi haven't been challenged or seen anything like the Sith in all that time. That line is in there because it begins to explain why they are so aloof and arrogant because they haven't had anything like that to worry about in a thousand years. No Jedi alive, not even 800 year old Yoda, has ever fought a Sith or anything quite like it. Every last Jedi in this time period is completely unprepared for what is about to happen and that is a big part of the reason why they will fail and lose because they let their guard down and became complacent and were no match for the Sith who had been hiding in the shadows for a thousand years, as basically Maul says when he says to Palpatine that at last we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi, at last we shall have revenge. And honestly, it kind of baffles me that people can't understand that or will make excuses for it, though, as I was saying before, some people will make excuses for anything because that's how you love Star Wars. But they'll be like, well, if it's not a Sith, it's not breaking the canon. Not to mention, Kiati Mundi is wrong about the Sith anyway. They are actually back, so why is everyone so upset about all of this? And if that's really the point you're trying to make, and yes, I have seen some trying to make that point, well, you really don't understand the story. You don't get it. You don't get that the whole point is that Kiati Mundi was wrong. That is the point. The Jedi didn't know the Sith were back. That is the whole point of that one line. That they did not know the Sith or anything like them was out there. And so now it kind of seems like Kiati Mundi is either willfully ignorant of something that has happened recently or that something else rather shady is going on, a cover-up of some kind and that will then recontextualize the whole story. It changes everything we thought we knew and now paints the Jedi in an even worse light than they'd already been painted in or seen by some who really think the Jedi are kind of the bad guys of the story. There are a lot of people out there who think the point of the prequels was to show that the Jedi are wrong and flawed and bad somehow, even though the larger story George Lucas told ends with a little movie called Return of the Jedi because, um, yeah, they are actually the good guys. They were just defeated by a Sith they were completely unprepared for, and though, yeah, that was their fault, 
it doesn't mean it is the fault of the entire Jedi Order, the entire history of them, an order that had stood as the guardians of peace and justice in the galaxy for a thousand generations. I mean, do some people not realize that the only reason Qui-Gon assumes or says that what he encountered, that what he thinks Maul is, is a Sith Lord, because he doesn't know of anything else like the Sith or hasn't heard about the Jedi encountering anything else like them before, certainly not recently. And sure, the Jedi have probably run into dark side cults or poorly skilled or poorly trained dark side users that really weren't much of a threat. They've probably run into all kinds of things like that over the years. But what they encounter at the end of the fourth episode of The Acolyte, even if they never hear it is a Sith, is very much presented as, at least thus far, something very skilled with the Force, something comparable to a Sith. And so, assuming Kiati Mundi hears about this encounter, and I'm gonna assume it's hard to keep an encounter that will probably see the death of a bunch of Jedi a secret, but assuming he does hear about it, and why wouldn't he since he was already privy to the information about Mei and her having killed two Jedi? He was at the meeting that discussed who might have even trained her. But if he knows about this dark side user, he would say when Qui-Gon says his only conclusion about Maul is that it is a Sith Lord a hundred years later, he wouldn't just say, well, the Sith have been extinct for a millennium. He would say, I wonder if, instead of a Sith exactly, it's something related to what we encountered a hundred years ago. And again, Qui-Gon is simply coming to the conclusion it is a Sith because he has limited information, unlike Kiati Mundi. He thinks a Sith is the only explanation for it because he doesn't know anything else like them. He's basically saying it is either a Sith or something just like them that maybe doesn't call itself a Sith, but is so similar to one that, even if it isn't a Sith, it's pretty much the same thing or same level of threat. And again, if Ki-Adi Mundi or any of the Jedi present on the Council, if they had information of something else recently like that, they'd just correct him, or as I was saying, offer up a different possibility that it might just be one of these Darksiders that we encountered a hundred years ago. Well, that is going to be all I got for you this time. Now it is your turn to take to the comments below and tell me what you think about anything and everything I talked about here. Or, of course, you can always ask a question for a future lightning response or thunderous ramble video. All you got to do is start your comment with Hey Thor and then ask away. But whatever you choose to do, leave a comment below. Let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.